Uh, looks like we are getting into game. Silver, let's get these introductions underway. Start us off. All right, guys, bottom left-hand corner, tons of cakes being delivered to his base. He's the green Zerg. He's 1-0, and his name is a laser. Oh, man. And spawning in the top left corner, vertical spawn it is today. It's the light pink Protoss. Down 1-0 in this best of seven. It's Harstem. Oh, Harstem, man. the sleepy toss. The sleepy toss. Can we just call him that from here on in? I think that would be pretty appropriate. So it's not uh, passive aggressive, though, is it? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, we do have another hatch <laughs> gas pool coming from a laser here. Uh, so it looks like very, very similar builds. I mean, I, I mean, silver. What are we, what are we thinking? Do you think that they're going to be doing the same thing, or maybe switching it up? Well, Harstam right now is he just added a third probe to that gas. So I'm not sure if that was a mistake or if he wanted like a tiny bit more minerals. But he is going to be macroing up. Drops the gateway, then the nexus, then the cyber core. For anyone out there wondering how to open as Protoss. This is definitely a very safe way to do so. Just drops the second gas, so nothing overly aggressive. Probably some very standard play out of Harstam. A laser in the bottom of the map. Also playing very standard. We haven't seen him start speed yet. He's just started his queen. Uh, both queens. I would love to see three to four queens out of him. Like, we see four. The creep spread will be absolutely amazing all game. But if we just see two to three, we're going to see a very standard push. Oh, my God. I would love to see a queen push this game. Oh, man, that would actually probably make my day a little bit better. Uh, queen pushes are always exciting and fun to cast because they're so, so intense. And you know what I'm noticing here is that the gas is not pie. Like, they made the minerals cake, but there's... It would be a nasty what? pie. It would be a nasty cake or a nasty pie. Like, you don't want gassy anything. I, I don't know, man. The Protoss, they eat some weird stuff. That's true. I mean, and the Zerg are cannibals. I mean, they don't even have mouths, right? Yeah. So how do they eat? Do, wait, wait, say that again? How do Protoss eat? They have no mouths. No, they do have mouths. Like Not the zealots. Oh, yeah, that's... They're, they're covered. I'm... We do have a third queen, though, in production. Three queens is going to be the choice. Uh, back at home, we have a DT shrine. Proxy DT shrine, bottom right-hand corner of the map. Yeah, now that proxy DT shrine, as we were mentioning... Harstam, he was going to do something crazy, and hey, that's exactly what we're seeing, his regular build. Except, you know, everything's delayed because DT Shrine's so good. Yeah, so the Twilight Council, I immediately thought that he's going to do some very normal Adept push stuff. I was like, alright, totally see that. I'm going to do it nice and early, nice and uh, do some Adept harass, you know, trick his opponent a little bit. But what it looks like we're going to see is some DT rush power. We might even see uh, an Adept... Uh, Archon push, which would make me just the happiest person on the on the planet. Oh, an adept Archon push with DTs behind it. Oh my goodness, uh, that sounds absolutely insane. Uh, the probe is still just kind of hanging around on that bottom right side, doing his own thing. Research getting finished, or almost getting finished. Uh, this Overlord actually getting a really good scout. He does see everything, but. What he's not seeing is that DT shrine, and he has to know something's up. Lings are moving on or up that ramp, uh, getting forced out by those adepts. Those lings just checking. Hey, is there a third? Nope. Okay. Well, we got to be careful here. One DT is being warped in on the right side. He's just going to kind of run on over to the left and just do as much damage as he possibly can. We do have the third actually coming down. I mean, silver. This is a super like. It's pretty awesome. safe, but at the same, like this is it's pretty it's solid. It's very off-meta, which I love to see. I love to see players doing something a little bit different. The DTs haven't been rushed in. They're very possible right now. We have, I think it's okay, we have two in the front, one queen at each base, at least at least five queens on the map right now. So the creep spread, there's the DT, it's in the base. Oh, man, it looks like a laser does see this. All its queens are moving back. Roaches going all around that DT, so the DT is spotted, and... He has to be as careful as he possibly can. Add up shading into the natural, but not going to hold that. Uh, another DT on the right side, taking down that third. And, I mean, hey, Queen is getting transfuses. More add ups, or sorry, more Dark Templar are joining the forces. And these add ups actually moving on back home, letting these Dark Templar do as much damage as they possibly can. Overseer is 
here he's able to see everything and he's going to be cleaning everything up. Third base is down. The DT yeah. to the third base out. No, the third is definitely down. So Silver, with the third base being down, is two base Zerg right now against three base Protoss. It's not looking good. What do you think? It is a desperate, desperate situation for a Zerg player. He knows his macro is, is low. He knows that his production is limited. Uh, when you have less than three hatcheries as a Zerg player, you're pushing out at maximum, I guess, 12. No, is it 12? Yeah, 12 uh, larva before you're just stuck. Before you're just stuck and then you got to mm -hmm. make more. So maybe 12 units. That's not that many roaches. It's not that many lings. And it's certainly not enough drones to uh, re-up what he's already lost. So tons of queens on defense at that third base. Uh, Harstum sitting back looking pretty, taking his third base. He's, over, he's even oversaturated. He's just very happy right now. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> Harstum is just in full swing, looking pretty good. Mothership Core actually defending off some of this uh, here Ling aggression on the right side. And DT actually pacing back and forth between the potential fourth and... That little ramp area on the left side. Actually, we do have an overboard right on top of that ramp. So, or not ramp, but uh, the bridge. So, still sitting at sixty-seven to uh, sixty-seven to thirty-three Harstum. Oh, really? Okay, that's pretty uh, pretty intense. But I mean, hey, we are only in the second match here. We're just now seeing Harstum, the Harstum train leaving the station, more or less. And I mean, these immortal stalkers, Sentry. Adepts moving on forward. Hallucinated Phoenix checking out the forward army. Just going to see what's going on. I and mean, this is a pretty solid composition. As a Zerg player, though, Silver, I mean, what do you think could really take this down? He is about to finish his Lurker Den. The Lurker Den changes the game a little bit. It allows the Protoss to accidentally move into Lurkers. Let's say he doesn't have an, he doesn't have an Observer. Let's say he isn't looking quite uh, specifically at his army and they're on, a, they're on a movement path. And they walk into three to six Lurkers. That entar entire army is going to take so much damage that he'll either lose it or be, or be pushed back. But he will have to make a mistake in order to do so. The, the Lurkers right now being morphed in three at the moment, two Hydras in production, and a bunch of Lings. I don't believe that Harstam actually knows about the Lurkers yet. Uh, I'm not 100% sure in this one. Uh, Silver, can you confirm? Um, let's check. He does not know. Oh, man. So this is definitely going to be a surprise visit. The Lurker is burning underneath the cake floor. There's no Observer. No Observer with the army. We do have a slight engage. Lurkers cracking. And Harstam now knows. He knows that he has to be super careful. Observer... He's across the ravine. He has to kind of join this army, but we do have an attack on the left side of the map uh, for Harstam's fourth, and these lings just get, trying to get anything done. We do have a cancel on two pylons, so not too much, but looks like, yeah, he's... Oh, sorry, those are cannons! Oh, man. Uh, these Harstam builds, he has to be super careful. Yeah, man, this is an awful position for our Zerg player. He is in a slight advantage as there's no observers quite on the map just yet, I don't think. No observers? One uh, observer on the map. One. Yeah. So he has a little bit of a chance. I mean, if that observer gets it's, gets sniped or it's not in position, he can't. He literally cannot engage on top of lurkers. Yeah, I think that's... I mean, one of the big things is that Elaser, he's going to need some overseers here just to snipe that, sent, or snipe that observer, though. Uh, but we do have both players just kind of waltzing in the middle of the map as well as a... Uh, run by on the left side, Ling's flowing on forward, just trying to get a little bit done. Lurker's joining this composition as well as some Hydras and Roaches. The, the Disruptors, though, oh man, they're coming forward. Main army coming back to defend. The laser just doing so much damage on the left side of the map. Silver, I mean, this this is uh, almost perilous, though. He, the prediction is completely stopped. What do you Look think about this? This is a great attack from a laser. A laser definitely going to take down that fourth base. Back home, no hives started, but this uh, engagement has been wonderful. He's chasing down those lurkers, chasing down the other army, um, but a nice snipe on that fourth. Yeah, no, this fourth is definitely, I mean, it's it went down. That's a pretty good position for a laser to be in. He has to get on out of there, though. He, I mean, he did his damage. It looks like he just, he's going to say, all right, I did it, guys. I'm done. I'll be back. Uh, but so... Harstam, big, big move out. Say that? 
There's a big engagement about to happen. He's coming through. He's going to send the Disruptor uh, shots all the yep. way up. Disruptor's proccing. Stalker's blinking forward. Adept's trying to get in there. Uh, but they are caught a little bit behind this army. The Lurkers are just now morphing, and some are getting in. Disruptor balls going off. Ooh. Multiple Lurkers going down, bringing them out of that uh, the ground there. Yeah, three Lurkers exploding. Yeah, more engaging going forward. Hydra's actually getting taken care of. I think these, these Disruptor Balls are just going to be way too much for a laser to handle. I mean, he's Arstam's able to pick off every single Lurker just by kind of blindly throwing it, and even if he doesn't have the center Observer there anymore. Uh, but regardless, these Stalkers, they're taking a very defensive position. It's going to be blood for blood here. The fourth base is getting targeted down, uh, or at least sieged up more or less, but the laser trying to do a little bit of damage on the reinforcement side. Yeah, he's doing a decent damage. The disruptor shot takes down most of that attack, and now the probe's a little bit exposed. A Hydra and a Roach team here. Yeah. Doing their uh, best. They're best buddies. You know it, man. These, these Hydras and Queens are trying to defend this. Lurkers in the back trying to do everything they can. Transfuse is going down left and right on these Lurkers just to keep them alive. But the Observer is definitely with this army, so now the Stalkers can just do what they do. Ro or Hydra's in the ramp for the reinforcements, but the Disruptors are just way too much. He's not getting everything in that he needs. The drones are getting pulled. This does not look good for a laser here. It might actually, yeah, no, it's just, it's not looking good at all. Uh, these Disruptors are just doing way too much damage. Disruptors are such a hard unit to engage against. They really change the entire swing of the battle. Lurkers are good, but they, they're, they take, they're taken down by two shots from a Disruptor. Yeah, and this more Disruptor Balls going off. Lang's trying to chase them, but unfortunately not able to get any sort of engage. And a laser is in such a rough position here. We know he was down earlier economically. He did snipe that fourth, but... I mean, with the fourth up and going back for Hearthstone, he got it almost immediately, and he's he's really looking to get the kill here. The Disruptors are going off. More Hydras going down. And this army for Hearthstone is going to continue on forward. Looking good. Dealing so much damage. I mean, Silver, do you think he has a chance at all? I will never count a player out until they GG, man. 76 probes to 62 drones, though. That number constantly falling. GG! Yeah, man, you got that. Alrighty. I mean, the Hearthstone train, it's starting to pull out of that station there, and... It's it's gonna be a bumpy ride, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, man, I don't know if I if I was a laser, I'd be wanting to stand up to Hearthstone uh, one on one with in a macro game, especially with a laser being the more tactically sound player and Hearthstone being the more macro centric uh, style player. Mm -hmm. But that's what yeah. I was trying to say. I expect a laser to play pretty much standard until he starts to lose, and then I think he'll fall back onto his own style. Oh, okay, so something kind of like how Harstam was doing, yeah. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, that's definitely a good point to bring up is, uh, I mean, you don't want to lose this. This is $50 on the line, guys. That is lunch for a week. Oh, man. I really like the decision to use um, DTs in this game. It's nice and early in the best of seven, so they weren't really expected. Um, and they leave the, the next five games, they leave a laser scared. Mm-hmm. He has to constantly be aware that there might be DTs. He didn't see the shrine. The build look, looked super normal. Where was it? It was in the bottom right. He never even saw it. 